What is up everybody, it is your boy Fry. Thank you once again for tuning in to another video man. Shout out notifications squad. Hope you've been doing well. Hope you've been practicing your craft every day, releasing music, mixing, whatever it is that you do. Hopefully you're doing it every day. You know what I mean? So let's get straight into it. We're gonna be doing another question and answer. Once again, shout out to notification squad. I have been uploading a bit less this month. I've been dealing with a whole lot of cool business stuff. Uh, you know what I mean? Trying to get the channel more fun and three-dimensional, figuring out ways that we can film and do really cool videos. So be patient. This year is going to be really fun. But nonetheless, let's get straight into another question and answer. Let's see if that does its thing. Alrighty, there we go. Also, as a side note, I do get a lot of DMs week in and week out uh, asking for specific types of videos. I highly recommend that you type in for the producer you know with the keywords of the type of video that you want chances are i have covered a type of video like that you know what i mean so shout out to everyone that do do that i see once in a while a comment from a really old video and that means that you are watching some videos are really good some are obviously a bit more amateurish because i was in my first year of youtube or whatever but definitely check out uh you know some of those videos and as i said this year we're going to be doing some really cool content so definitely stick around man continue to smash that like button continue to subscribe if you've not really does help the channel let's get into the first question six aj rich asks what is the main thing that separates a pro record from an amateur record as in the final product all right so we could talk for days about this but i'm gonna try and refine this down to a formula that will work for you to get better sounding records so when it comes to mixing recording mastering and then your final song as a product i would recommend that you start to look at all your music in the way of a production line okay you want to make sure that all of your ingredients are of the highest quality so we're going to focus on two elements right we're going to have our beat right two track instrumental and then we're going to have our vocal performance on one side we need a really high quality beat meaning the beat needs to be dynamic it needs to sound full it needs to sound leveled it needs to sound pretty much finished before you even start recording onto that beat right if it's full of vibe full of life sounds amazing your performance is going to be a lot more fun a lot more eventful simply because of the fact that everything surrounding that beat is going to sound amazing second to that is obviously our vocal performance this is going to be the selling point of our track we need to make sure that we are actually good and competent singers so that we can really vibe onto that beat really make it sound good make it sound melodic a lot of times people think that they can fix it in the mix this is something that is common on youtube these days and i'm glad people bring it up uh you cannot really fix a bad performance in the mix you can clean it up but at the end of the day even if it is the most amazing uh, or the most well mixed record ever if it doesn't have vibe if it doesn't have that kind of um message being carried across through the speakers your song is never going to do well no matter what type of gear we've mixed it through you know so that is the most important thing especially when i'm mixing records for people um the main thing i'm focusing on is vibe you know what i mean how how good does that vocal performance sound are you really conveying that message in a way where i know for a fact that i could enhance that message you know what i mean that's all mixing really is it's just enhancing the message so really if we were to look at it as a production line i would always focus first on making sure that i guess the camera's inverted maybe but <laughs> Uh, step one high quality vocal performance all right high quality beats and instrumentals okay from then on out we can then begin to focus on high quality recording techniques this is where your theory starts to come in you want amazing vocal techniques you want to find the right mic that works for your voice or your vocalist voice uh, you want a good sounding microphone pre-amplifier and then you also want uh, to make sure that you're capturing everything in a high quality from then on out when it's time to mix you can then focus solely on enhancing your record instead of spending time fixing this is a lot of uh you know a lot of questions i get are how do i fix this how do i fix that you don't want to be fixing anything you just want to be taming and dealing with certain things if you find yourself doing more than you know 10 db of of, of bass reduction on a vocal um you know notching and, and just going crazy on all of the processing sure i process quite a bit on some of the records that i mix but as long as the vibe is there it's always going to sound great it's always going to sound full at the end of the track but if you're finding that you're doing all this stuff you've learned all the stuff all this theory and it's not sounding good at the end of your track it means you need to go back um, and then maybe redo the song maybe you know what i mean realize that the vocal performance wasn't that good and realize that it's never going to be uh, a 10 out of 10 song if that original performance is not good you know what i mean mastering mixing recording are all simply ways to enhance the original performance so if step one is not good step 10 won't sound good your end result won't sound good so hopefully that that helps you um definitely look at it in that way that's the way that i've been able to you know take on better projects you know what i mean i'm not i used to really just pull my hair out every day trying to deal with completely busted records that were never going to go anywhere um even my own stuff you know what i mean it's like 
you think it's the isotope master eq or whatever it is but really it's just the vocal performance and the lack of punchiness lack of width lack of depth in your beat so hopefully that makes sense that is definitely some hardcore advice but it has definitely helped me save time uh, when it comes to mixing as well as accepting projects as well as how i assess my own projects when i record so yeah man keep mixing every day uh, seek out high quality clients build strong relationships and i swear to you your content and material is going to sound a lot better so yeah man keep mixing jake skies shout out to jake tips to not over compress the master bus all right so my best advice for this is to find a method or a workflow that works for you this is something that i learned from tom lord lg and chris lord lg they are big fans of using the from what i understand the focus right red 3 uh stereo compressor that's what they use on their mix bus and they'll pretty much mix with that compressor through the whole process so for me personally how i mix these days is i'm mixing um through my daking fed compressors those two green compressors somewhere in the back there and what I'll do is I'll usually start off my mix by toning uh, with the SSL EQ, the beat. So I'll do a bit of uh, mixing right there. Then I'll inject the main vocal once I feel the toning of the beat sounds good. And then I'll inject my mix bus chain. And from there on out, I'm going to be compressing always. This is kind of my set standard because it, it's what works for me. I'm going to make sure I'm compressing about 1 to 2 dB with a fairly fast attack. That way I can mix into the compressor and kind of know how much gain reduction I'm going to be doing. In my opinion, it's kind of um, backwards to inject the mix bus uh, chain at the end of the mix because it's kind of like you've you've spent all this time working towards the sound and now you're going to inject a, a compressor on there and then change the overall characteristic of your mix i don't really like that um on top of that these compressors have com uh have um transformers in them so they definitely have a bit of a sound to them and because i like that sound i want all my mixes to kind of fit into that kind of mix bus chain so that's my recommendation if you don't have hardware compressors or anything definitely find a mix bus chain that works for you that emulates someone that you like uh, for example the classic ssl bus compressor technique is something you can do max as i said one to two db of compression is definitely going to work for hip-hop you really just want to be gluing together those kicks with the vocal to make sure it's not sounding too dynamic but also not too squashed if you're squashing your records and it kind of sounds lifeless uh, it's not going to sound good you know i've been listening to tidal a lot you know wave format um, and man the records are sounding amazing these days they're loud they punch they're up front so it is now more important than ever to make sure that your mix bus chain sounds good so focus on that find a workflow that works for you um, as i said acquire good taste in gear you know this is something i love man i love learning about all the different types of gear out there because each piece of gear has a certain sound you know for example the day kings have a i'm pretty sure they're using jensen transformers or something like that and they just have a sound they have this kind of metallic airy sound that i really like so you know definitely try out uh, different compressors definitely try out some different um digital compressors i'm also using after my my analog chain the ssl duende or native uh, SSL bus compressor and just doing like 0.5 dB of compression and then I use the makeup gain on that and that adds to my sound before I hit my uh, mastering limiter so definitely find something that works for you and keep mixing I'll check it out Marcus Kitchen asks where should time be spent within the mix example 10% auto tune 50% compression really good question man so this is something that I have really been focusing on in the past few months ever since going analog when it comes to mixing my records you can obviously emulate this in the box and find what works for you um so the way that i work right is that i will always begin by toning stuff i believe that eq and leveling are going to be the most important parts of your mix most importantly leveling you can pretty much do most of your mix by just leveling so the first half an hour to an hour should really just be spent listening to all the tracks static meaning with all the faders up okay no level changes and this is why i like clients to send me tracks that already have their own blend going on i don't mind if you send me a track with a bit of compression and eq on it i'm gonna push everything to the console do leveling then begin to eq and then within the first hour i'll kind of have the whole mix done per se once i'm done with that once i'm happy with what that level sounds like i'll then begin to compress stuff i'll then begin to uh, to do some parallel compression then begin to add in all the flanges and wonderful things now obviously if you are talking about auto-tune you want to auto-tune first so you can get that uh, kind of out of the way but as i said if you are mixing other people's material try and get their rough mixes um, into your session so that you're not spending too much time doing admin stuff you know a mixer's job is really to enhance not to fix uh, this is why for example i will reject the track if the stems are unlabeled okay so for example if you're sending me a track with 20 stems and they're all called audio 1 to 20 i'm going to spend an hour soloing stuff and listening to stuff and i don't care how good the track is it's a waste of time to do that i believe that if you are a recording artist everything should be well organized and maintained so that when you pass it over to the next stage of production they are 
able to ingest your material get it going because i have a set method of working channel one is for the vocal right channel nine and ten is for my beat i know exactly what to do with the material as long as it's labeled and i can focus solely on enhancing so find a method that works for you obviously um we all have different setups we all have different preferences and plugins but as i said um start off by leveling then spend a bit of time eqing eqing is probably going to be the most time that you're going to spend Focus on compressing for tone and then as well as consistency and then begin to bring in all of those flanges and all the beautiful things that make your mix kind of wider and uh, sound better. You know what I mean? So hopefully that, you know, is a good starting point for you. Find what works for you. As I said, um, I recommend if you want to copy my workflow to use SSL um, channel strips and then level within the SSL channel strip. Um, Brainworks makes some cool uh, SSL replicas or not replicas, kind of um, emulations per se. And uh, you know, find what works for you. So good luck. Storm123888 asks, Why is my mix not slapping anymore after I upload it to YouTube? All right, this is a question for all you or an answer for all you beat makers out there. So um, this is something I also answered a while back. Somebody asked me, Man, why do my songs not sound the same after I upload them to SoundCloud? And uh, that is a definitely a good scientific question. So what actually happens when you upload to streaming services is that they are going to compress your material um, to a format that works for them. Remember this, um, all streaming platforms have to upload your material to a server database. And in order to make sure that they have sufficient space every day, they're going to compress your files. Now, what's going to happen when they compress your files is that you are going to kind of lose a bit of quality. Now, when you compress the MP3 uh, from WAV format, for example, I render my videos out in um, AAC and then YouTube further crunches that sound to make it sound a bit more thin, a bit more less um, kind of 3D. You're definitely going to hear it last. I mean, I'm sad every day when I upload a video because it's like that's not exactly what it sounds like in WAV format. You know what I mean? So um, take note that when you're mixing your beats, everything sounds good because it's lossless meaning it's in wave format but the second you export it you're going to be exporting it into mp3 so one way to kind of combat this is to make sure that you're working in the highest quality up until the point where you upload it to a streaming service that way the only compression that is going to happen is going to be on youtube obviously video um editing softwares aren't able to i don't know if there is one if there is one please recommend it to me um but i know for a fact when i render from for example this video from adobe premiere it renders to aac which even sounds better than youtube um but once it goes to youtube it's converted again and it starts to sound like it's caving in in the top end a lot of the depth and dimension starts to vanish so the best way to work around that is just to learn how to make your music sound good overall that way your message is still being carried across you know a lot of the vocal effects i do still sound good they still sound about 80 percent as good as they sounded like in the actual flp so Consider that when mixing. Um, that's why I personally enjoy listening to streaming services like Tidal. I'm way, I'm Tidal gang over Spotify gang simply because Spotify also does this compression thing that I don't like as an audio file. And I can hear that when I'm listening on my system. So consider that. Go learn more about it. Go learn more about audio compression. It's a lot of cool science, but it's going to teach you a lot more about the industry. So good luck. Dan Shi asks, how to solve the transients getting obnoxious when toning beats like in your latest video? Okay, so this again, um, last night I was jogging, I tried to jog every day and I was listening to a track, I won't mention which artist track, but the hi-hat was so loud, like the hi-hat was just so incredibly loud um, and it's obvious that they had not really um, tested their track on every system, right? The hi-hat was incredibly loud and I skipped the song, okay? So it's really important to make sure that your beats don't sound, as you said right here, obnoxious, okay? Um, one way to combat that is to really just listen to your favorite song, listen to some classic Dr. Dre stuff. Dr. Dre is one of the kings, a lot of the earliest stuff, The Chronic. He's one of the kings of leveling, all the elements within a hip-hop mix. Hip-hop mixes have never really changed much in, in all the elements that exist. Kick, snare, hi-hat, um, you know, bass, vocal, and melodies, really. You could group it to those six things. And uh, you want to make sure that everything sounds good, sounds within a certain range. Now, the way that you achieve that is by simply leveling, okay? So listen to your favorite song, mirror that kind of drum mix, you know, picture that drum mix in a room, copy that, Make sure the hi-hat is a certain loudness. It's not biting your head off, right? Make sure the kick drum isn't clipping your your your, your speakers, right? Make sure that your snare sounds good. It's, it's slapping. It sounds great. Um, and from there on out, you can really just 
blend everything together you know this again comes down to focusing on your material instead of using plugins to try and and fix what you haven't dealt with uh, previously you know what i mean so definitely spend time leveling and then learn to use a few of the traditional techniques there's a reason why people still use mix bus compression as i talked about earlier it adds a certain vibe to your track uh, so when mixing beats you know make sure to learn those techniques but most importantly it's going to be leveling so yeah man jot beat asks do you really need monitors or expensive headphones to get a better mix or can you get the job done without it i would guess um that is a good question man look drake's engineer uh, mixing engineer uh, gadget from what i understand uses headphones to mix a lot of drake's records and drake's records are some of the best sounding records out there they are um you know they've sold probably over a billion streams right i mean <laughs> and he mixes on headphones a lot of the time so you know who am i to say right i haven't sold a billion records i think you can do anything you can set your mind to if you have been mixing on headphones for 10 years and you're quite happy with that continue doing it you know who am i to say that uh, you should follow my method of working but when it comes to me personally i'm a guy who gets quite fatigued listening on headphones so i personally like to spend the money on a nice mix room i personally like to spend the money on some nice studio monitors on a subwoofer so that i can really enjoy the experience of listening to music i'm someone who does this every day my career is based around audio and i am a big firm believer in having high quality gear so that i can truly 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 get right into the middle of the mix and do what i need to do in order to make the mix sound good but if you're a guy who sits in his bedroom mixing with headphones and gets great results i can't tell you that it's wrong it's just a different way of working so in my opinion um if you really 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 want to know what it sounds like to mix in one of these rooms book a session you know spend the 150 dollars or whatever with some friends and go and simply listen to some records in a high quality studio right i'm sure wherever you live there is a professional facility with some nice monitors go and, and listen to your favorite records you know studios these days don't mind if you come in just to listen right you know it's cash in their hands but you get to walk away with the experience of listening to music in a high quality environment and if that's something that interests you then definitely do it you know what i mean invest in in, in, in the high quality gear luckily enough these days man there's so much gear out there that can get you close to the top without you breaking the bank whereby in the 70s and 80s you really had to invest a lot of money in a lot of equipment to get a decent setup so you know it's 2021 there's a lot of awesome gear out there and i recommend that you if you are looking for some speakers check out some secondhand gear obviously listen to it first um you know reverb.com is a great place to buy secondhand gear and uh, you know see what works for you man it's all about what works for you it's all about what gets you the end result not so much what you're using so you know what i mean uh, these are all tools you know a lot of people say oh man you're flexing the gear these are all tools in order to get the job done all right you don't go in a mechanic shop and uh, you know so oh, you, you know you're flexing your you know what i mean wrenches and stuff like that like these are all those tools you know so see what works for you um this is a creative field as much as it is a technical field so you still do have the kind of you know what i mean space to figure out what works for you as i said so hopefully that answers your question keep mixing every day most important part bruno sent asks if i want to sell beats what's the right db for mastering good question shout out to all the beat makers out there when it comes to um selling beats online i think the most important thing is to not focus on the hyper technicalities um they are important yes but i think the thing that sells beats you know i used to sell quite a few beats and i remember selling this young thug type beat for like 500 dollars, and i was so happy and i remember i didn't do anything on the master track that track and i was kind of boggled but what i realized was that the track had so much vibe in it right so what i want all the producers out there to start looking into is to really start mixing your tracks based on vibe um when you're mixing your tracks make sure the melodies are just in the middle of the track widened out so that that artist can sit right in the middle of the track right make sure those drums sound good punchy you know what i mean if you've got punchy drums really jumpy sounding poppy melodies that's why um hyper pop is so kind of big these days is because those melodies are kind of bouncing in and out you know what i mean they have so much vibe in them that people are interested in the melody people are interested in the vibe people are more interested in all of those things more so than um the technicalities now when it comes to the technicalities i would recommend everyone out there to make your beats loud but not to have to master to zero db all right i would rather say make your beat sound punchy at minus three db that way when somebody leases your beat they can then personally have their mix engineer pull that track up this is something that um you know a few tracks that i've worked on i've received the beat and it's sitting at minus 10 excellent i can then mix the, the artist vocals to minus 10 and then i can do the mastering and have it sound great so don't mix and master your tracks to, to a point where it is impossible to undo what you've done over compression meaning over limiting will lead to that and i can assure you 
over limited songs on youtube sound like trash okay please don't do the mega mastering on youtube especially if you're doing the type beats it just doesn't sound good okay you can send them a version one thing i used to do when i used to set exclusives exclusive beats was that i would send them an unmastered version and a mastered version that way the mix engineer could choose and a lot of artists quite like that that they would come back and say hey man i like the fact that you know you gave us all these options uh do you want to make another beat for us you know what i mean so build relationships in that way um, but also provide people with options so good luck to you man jan triple v asks you mixing subscriber songs for money how much yes definitely check out the link below i do have a website um that you can go and ahead and just check out the procedure for mixing i am mixing tracks for subscribers i get to choose what i mix simply because you know if i can add value to it i will mix it you know what i mean i'm not a um kind of generic mixing store or whatever it is i really like to get in depth with your mix and if i can add value to it i will mix it i am also working on the website revamping it so that we have a lot more options and that kind of thing i really want to work with people help enhance um your tracks so definitely check that out i am offering mixing and mastering as well as song reviews so if you want me to analyze your track show you all the holes and kind of areas in your mix you can definitely check that out so yeah man keep mixing Alrighty, so those are all the questions for today i hope you learned something hopefully as I said, this weekend you will be working on some good material. I'm certainly going to be mixing. I've got two tracks to do, so it'll be lots of fun. Um, yeah, man, stay well. Definitely check out the links in the description for my vocal recording course, vocal mixing course, and vocal enhancer for AFL Studio. I will be shooting some new courses soon. I bought some gear that's going to help um, kind of with the process, so it'll be a lot of fun. But nonetheless, man, hope you have a great weekend. I'll check you out next time. Peace out.